It's not a topic people are eager to stop and chat about, but it's the reason why many of these retirees are here. <laughs> a chance to be with people. Unfortunately, I lost my husband to cancer 16 months ago, so this has been a uh, great, great thing for me to get out and to, instead of being lonely at home. Well, I live by myself, uh, so yeah, the loneliness is there. Statistics Canada says 1.4 million seniors report feeling lonely, and it's not just the elderly. The sadness that comes from being lonely, it, uh, it, it destroys me. My, it destroys my psyche. It makes me more insecure. And a growing number of Canadians are living alone. 28% of us in 2016, making singles the most common type of household in the country. There are almost 40 million hits right now talking about minister loneliness. The British government's decision to appoint a lead on loneliness has certainly struck a nerve, but this psychiatrist isn't convinced it will help. One can understand the temptation then for a big government announcement and a big government push, but I'm not confident this will do much. The root causes of loneliness vary. For some, anxiety and depression may play a role. For others, issues can range from age and illness to family relationships. Ultimately, this is a human problem. Uh, human problems are difficult for governments to resolve. How do we deal with the fact that people don't reach out to their elderly relatives? I'm not sure a minister is going to be able to resolve that in Britain or in Canada or anywhere else. Mm. This senior scientist says while that's true, the health impacts of loneliness rival smoking and Canadians may benefit from a more targeted approach. I think a more systematic uh, a national a program in this area should be certainly something something to be considered. Because reaching out and finding ways to connect can be life-saving. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto.